The ball and socket joint provides for the highest range of motion. This joint consists of a rounded head, the ball, on the end of one bone resting in a rounded depression, the socket, on the end of the other bone. This kind of joint is designed for movement in all directions. The hip and shoulder joints are both examples of ball and socket joints. Think of all the different ways in which you can move your arm at the shoulder. You can twirl it around, move it up and down, and swing it back and forth. The hinge joint does not offer such a wide range of motion. At the elbow, these joints are composed of a cylinder at the end of one bone resting in a cylindrical depression at the end of the other bone. They provide for motion in only one plane. Think of the hinge on a door. The door can swing in or out on the hinge, but that's it. It can't swing in any other direction. The same is true for hinge joints. Your knees are also hinge joints. Even though the bones at the joint are flat, strong ligaments ensure that the hinge motion can occur. To get an idea of how different the range motion is between a ball and socket joint and a hinge joint, compare the many ways you can move your arm at the shoulder to the few ways you can move your forearm at the elbow. Saddle joints are composed of two saddle-shaped bones that are oriented perpendicular to one another. These joints provide a larger range of motion than a hinge joint, but they do not allow for rotation. Thus they provide less freedom of motion than a ball and socket joint, but more freedom of motion than a hinge joint. The joint that joins your thumb's carpel to its metacarpel, called the carpometacarpel joint, is a saddle joint. Plane joints, also called gliding joints, consist of two flat surfaces of about equal size which slide against one another. Typically there is very little motion in this type of joint. A process from the scapula rubs against the process in the clavicle to make a gliding joint. Another example of a plane joint comes from the vertebral column. The joint between a superior articular process of one vertebra and their inferior articular process of another vertebra is a gliding joint. Pivot joints are formed when a process from one bone is surrounded by a ring of another bone. This interesting type of joint allows for only partial rotational motion. For example, the second cervical verbata, called the axis, has a long process, called the dens, that pokes through the foramen of the first cervical verbata, called the atlas. This forms a pivot joint that allows us to rotate our head. This motion is most commonly used to shake your head no. Ellipsoid joints are similar to ball and socket joints. However, as their name implies, they are elliptically shaped instead of spherically shaped, as in the case in ball and socket joints. Because the joint is not spherically shaped, the range of motion is more limited than it is in the ball and socket joints. Only a slight amount of rotation is allowed, making the range of motion very similar to that of a saddle joint. Your wrist joint is an example of an ellipsoid joint. Synovial joints are designed to reduce friction in a most ingenious way. A synovial joint is surrounded by an articular capsule, which is also called a joint capsule. You can think of the articular capsule as a thin sac which surrounds the joint. The inner layer of the articular capsule is also called the synovial membrane. This membrane is a collection of cells which produce synovial fluid. This liquid is made from blood plasma and chemicals which are secreted by the cells in the synovial membrane. The slippery nature of the synovial fluid lubricates the joints, reducing the friction between the articular cartilage of the two bones.